Seriously, you're such a fool. How can anyone be as inept as you? Inept? How many times had such cruel words been hurled at me? I had vowed my eternal love to him, truly believing that we could find happiness together. That was the idea at least when we got married. But when I came to my senses, the so-called love had vanished somewhere. My husband's domineering attitude escalated day by day to the point where even the care of my mother-in-law was forced upon me. Physically and emotionally, I was on the brink. If things kept going this way, I would lose my sanity. However, God did not abandon me. The person who reached out to me, teetering on the edge of despair, was none other than my mother-in-law, whom I was taking care of. My name is Mary Wagner, 30 years old. After graduating from university, I worked in a publishing company. I quit my job at the time of marriage, and now I'm a full-time housewife. My friends say they envy me. How lucky you are to be a housewife. Your husband must be earning well. But my married life isn't all that happy. In fact, it might be closer to hell. The cause of this was my husband, Jack. We met through work and got married after two years of dating. Jack, three years older than me, had a slightly cool side to him, and we weren't exactly the lovey-dovey couple. Still, I loved him for his solid self-identity and mature composure. I thought we could live a peaceful, happy life together. That was my expectation, but the moment we became a married couple, his attitude completely changed. Jack, to put it plainly, was a patriarch. I realized this a few days after our marriage. I, who had listened to his desire for me to become a full-time housewife, began to devote myself to household chores from the day after our marriage. That day, too, I had made dinner in time for Jack's return and was waiting for him. Jack comes home a little past 7 p.m. He then, looking at the dinner on the table, suddenly raised his voice. Hey, what's this meal? The? It's a gratin and salad plus a pottage soup. Don't mess with me. If you're going to prepare a meal for your tired husband, it should be a full course meal. Do mess with me. If you're going to prepare a meal for your tired husband, it's a full course meal. I'm, I'm sorry. The last time you said it was delicious, so... That's not an excuse. Why can't you even do such simple things? You're really over as a woman. You're just too incompetent. Mate, you don't have to say it like that. Then suddenly he threw the salad-filled dish onto the floor. At this unexpected act, a scream-like voice slipped out. What are you doing? It's because you as a wife can't even do the bare minimum, right? That's why I made it clear to you. You don't have to disrespect the food like that. Shut up. If you have time to make excuses, use your deficient brain to think more about how to become suitable as my wife, you fool. Fool? I've been called that for the first time in my life. Sure, I've been scolded by my parents, and I've argued with my brother and friends, but I've never been subjected to such cruel words. More so, being told such things by the husband I love. It was only a few days since our marriage. I never imagined that he would throw the food on the floor just because he didn't like the dinner menu. That being said, I'm a housewife, and I'll continue to be dependent on him for our livelihood. I can't go against my husband. As a newlywed, the last thing I wanted to do was upset my husband. Since that day, I've been treading on eggshells around him. I'm extremely cautious not to step on his landmines. Every piece of laundry must be ironed meticulously. The loaded potato soup should be simple, and the seasoning of the side dishes should be well seasoned. Cleaning. Even a single strand of hair on the floor is not allowed. Living under such pressure, my nerves gradually wore thin. But without regard to me, his patriarchal dominance continued to escalate. Hey, this shirt has a crease left in the sleeve. Don't you have eyes? Uh, I'm sorry. I'll iron it right away. I'm leaving for work now, you know. You're always so slow. I'll do it right away. You won't have time for that. Damn, you're so annoying first thing in the morning. How much more do you need to upset me to be satisfied? You incompetent woman. I'm sorry, really sorry. Whenever I made a mistake, I immediately bowed my head in apology. This was also something ordered by my husband. Depending on the severity of the mistake, the level of my apology changes. This time I was forgiven just by bowing. But when it's really bad, I have to kneel down in apology. When my mistakes continue, he sometimes even pointedly presents me with a filled-out divorce document. 
It's scary how you get used to things, and if you keep living like this for a year, you start to feel like you're absolutely worthless. But I can't divorce him. Not in my current jobless state. I can't tell my parents who were so happy for our marriage that I got divorced. Especially not in such a short time span. The thought of continuing to be scolded by my husband forever filled me with despair for my future. As always, I was preparing dinner this day and waiting for him to come home. My daily routine is to finish cooking before 7 p.m. and have everything ready for him to eat at any time. As soon as the front door opens, I start laying out the food. If I don't finish by the time he sits down, I'll be forced to apologize again. My husband usually takes his seat in silence, but for some reason, this day was different. As he loosened his tie, he started a conversation with me. Mary, we're moving to my parents' house this weekend. The? Huh? Your parents' house? You mean your mom's place? Yeah, that's right. Have all our stuff packed by then. Why all of a sudden? Jack, you've always said that you didn't want to go back to your parents' house. In response to my probing question, his cold gaze pierced me. I instinctively shut my mouth, and after a pause he opened his. My mother fell, and it's hard for her to live on her own now. What? Then we should go there right away. She's been hospitalized for a week. We're moving when she gets discharged this weekend. Then I see that's what happened. But why all of a sudden? You were so against going back to your parents' house. You can guess why, can't you? Because I can inherit wealth. Wealth? As if he was delighted by his mother's situation, he continued the conversation. Listen, my father was just an ordinary guy. But my mother's family is rich, so she has a decent amount of money. What does that have to do with what happened this time? If I act dedicated during this time, I might be able to get a hefty inheritance. If we, as a couple, rush over, I'm sure she'll give us the whole inheritance. For such a reason? Isn't that a bit disrespectful? Shut up. You're being supported by me, so just listen quietly. I... I'm sorry. Being yelled at loudly, I instinctively apologized as usual. In front of my downcast self, he proclaimed with a triumphant look. Listen, you're the one who's going to take care of my mom. From now on, you're going to work as my maid at my parents' house for the rest of your life. Maid? You mean like that? Don't talk back. Who do you think is providing for your current lifestyle? It's thanks to Jack, right? Depending on how seriously you take care of my mother, the amount of inheritance we can get will change. So don't slack off in the care, understand? Urged to reply by him, I responded softly, yes. Seeing my obedience, he showed a satisfied smile before starting his dinner. Forcing me to care for his mother just for her inheritance. He doesn't think of me as his wife at all. To him, I'm just a housemaid. Although I knew this, being told so directly was quite a shock to me. Even so, I didn't have the courage to talk back. I was in a sense brainwashed, having erased my own possibilities. The next day, as per my husband's command, I began packing our belongings. We moved to my mother-in-law's place a week later to coincide with her discharge from the hospital. On the day of her discharge, Jack didn't come to the hospital using work as an excuse. So I was the one accompanying my mother-in-law. On the way back from the hospital, my mother-in-law opened her mouth in apology. Mary, I'm really sorry. Because of me, you're going through all this. No, don't worry about it. I'm a housewife, and if I can support you while staying at home, then there's nothing better than that. Thank you, but aren't you bothered by how sudden this was? Well, packing was a bit rushed, I guess. I bet it was. Even I was surprised. Jack moving in with us? I wonder why he decided to do this all of a sudden. Mary, did you hear anything? No, I didn't. It's understandable that my mother-in-law would find it strange. Jack has always disliked her often saying things like, she's a pain, and I don't want to see her. Despite this, he moved in with her as soon as she was hospitalized, aiming for her inheritance. To be honest, I was taken aback by Jack's transformation. However, I couldn't tell my mother-in-law the truth. Trying not to give anything away, I pretended to be calm. From this day on, my life as a caregiver began. Adapting to the unfamiliar role of a caregiver along with the housework in the large single-family home. Even returning to his parents' home didn't change Jack's domineering nature, and I was verbally abused almost daily when my mother-in-law wasn't around. 
I wasn't allowed to skimp on housework or caregiving, and my days were filled with constant activity from morning till night. This went on for about a month, until one day, as I was wiping my mother-in-law's body, she voiced her concern. Mary, have you lost weight again? No, don't worry about it, mother. Are you sure? I thought the same when you moved in. You looked a lot more worn out than when you first got married. She was right. Over the past year and a half of married life, I've lost 15 pounds. It's not that I've been skipping meals, but my appetite has certainly decreased. More than that, I don't have time to eat leisurely. My mother-in-law noticed the changes in me that even Jack hadn't. Just that fact alone made me feel a little less lonely. Not wanting to worry my mother-in-law, I forced a smile. Don't worry about me, mother. Just being able to have these nice chats with you every day makes me happy. Mary, let's stop this gloomy talk. Should I wipe your other hand, mother? Yes, please. Then my phone suddenly rang. Oh, it looks like it's Jack. At my mother-in-law's words, my body tensed. Jack had ordered me to answer his calls immediately. However, as I was holding a wet towel, I couldn't answer right away. But I knew if I didn't respond promptly, Jack would be furious again. Using my elbow, I managed to hit the answer button and switch the call to speaker. Hello? I replied. The moment I answered, a loud, angry voice came from the other end of the line. Hey, don't mess around. It shouted. Why didn't you answer immediately? I... I'm sorry. I was a bit occupied. What? A maid should answer at the first ring. But I was in the middle of something and couldn't... Didn't I always tell you not to talk back? You're so annoying! Why are you so incompetent? I... I'm sorry. You're taking proper care of the old lady, right? The amount of inheritance depends on how well you do your job. Do you get that? Being berated in front of my mother-in-law brought a rush of shame. He repeatedly insulted me, calling me incompetent and annoying, and then abruptly hung up the phone. After Jack's call ended, a heavy silence filled the room. It was broken by none other than my mother-in-law. Mary, that was Jack, right? Does he always talk to you like that? Uh, yes, but it's my fault. I am incompetent. What are you saying? You're such a kind and good girl, Mary. Man? I can't overlook this, Mary. It's time to get back at him. Huh? My mother-in-law then suggested a plan. Following her instructions, I threw all of Jack's belongings into the yard and locked the front door. Together, we waited for Jack to come home. A few hours later, we could hear rattling noises from the entrance. It must have been Jack, but of course the locked door wasn't open. Despite the intercom ringing, I ignored it just, just as my mother-in-law had instructed. Finally, my phone started ringing. It was Jack. I switched the call to speaker and answered, Hello. He started off shouting immediately. Hey, don't mess around. Open the front door right now. I can't do that. What? What are you saying? This is at the order of your mother. Cool? My mom? I always knew you were cold, but I never thought you'd treat your wife like this. No, that's not true. I knew something was off when you suddenly moved in. If to use your wife and rely on inheritance, how can you live such a shameful life? No, that's not true. What's not true? I have no intention of leaving you any inheritance. If you understand, get lost. This is my house. You will never be allowed back in. Flustered by my Miles words, Jack began pounding on the door. Through the phone, I could hear him begging. Please do something. I have an ally, my mother-in-law. I won't be brainwashed any longer. With resolution, I said firmly to Jack on the phone, I want a divorce. I can't go on with you anymore. What? What are you saying? Shut up. I'm done being married to a man like you. I won't waste my life anymore. It's better than being with you. I will overcome anything. I will no longer need you in my life. I refuse to have a trash like you. I abruptly hung up the phone and blocked his contact. His yelling could be heard from outside, but it eventually changed to cries of despair. My mother-in-law reported this to the police. For his nuisance behavior, he was taken away by officers. I used the divorce papers he had given me before to formally divorce him. On top of that, I sued him for compensation through a lawyer for mental and physical distress. With the witness of my mother-in-law, the proceedings went smoothly. After paying the lump sum compensation to me, Jack's savings were exhausted. 
In addition, he lost his position at his company after they found out about his police records, and he was reduced to an ordinary employee. Naturally, my mother-in-law refused to pass down her inheritance to Jack. After a discussion with the lawyer, in accordance with my mother-in-law's wish to leave everything to me, it was decided that she would transfer me about $1 million per year. I continued to care for my mother-in-law at her house. It's about the only thing I can do for her now. Mary, I'm so sorry for always troubling you. Even after divorcing Jack, you're still taking care of me. Why are you saying that, Mom? I should be the one thanking you. Really, I'm so fortunate to have a daughter like you. Same here. Let's keep supporting each other, okay? My life with my mother-in-law is filled with more smiles than I could have imagined. I'll do my best to do what I can for her until the end of her life.